Bonjour à tous, bienvenue. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this press conference of the United European Left, Nordic Green Left. Before giving the floor to Gabby Timmer, we have interpretation into Russian on channel 25, if I'm correct. Gabby Timmer, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I would also like to say good afternoon to you. As chairman of the GUE NGL group, I'd like to open this press conference and I would just like to point out that Petro Simonenko has accepted our invitation to come here today. We've already spent a day together here. We've had some common events today together with other guests who've m met to talk about the actions and things going on in uh, the Ukraine. Petro Simonenko is the first secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party in the Ukraine. And Yorgos Katulgalos, who's a member of our group, is also here with us. And indeed, for the reason that today we wanted to discuss under which conditions the Communist Party of the Ukraine currently is having to fight for its survival. And our group with in uh, Jorgos uh, Katrigalos, we have a member who's been mandated to follow and observe what's going on with the Communist Party of the Ukraine. And I think it's important that uh, Georgos could be here and express his, his views. I'll limit myself here to say that it is our interest as a group over the longer term to work with the majority in Parliament and we've been doing this for a long time, in raising issues of what's going on in Ukraine. For a long time in this parliament, we have expressed our views on how we disagree with the restriction of freedom of the press, freedom of expression, issues of uh, corruption that are prevalent in this country, and that now we find ourselves against the mainstream. When we as the left group say that regardless of third parties, we want the, a truthful reflection of what is going on in the country when we're discussing this area in Europe. That is part and parcel of the debate as much as what is being discussed with the Ukraine and what is happening in Ukraine. And that's why we've invited Petro Simonenko here today so that he can give us a very tangible view from his perspective of what is going on. And then we'll give Jorgos the floor. You have the floor, Petro. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful. Uh, to my colleagues from the European Parliament. I would like to thank Gabi Zimmer for their support and for, and for the opportunity for us to work together with you. Um, I'm very grateful for the support of the right of the citizens of Ukraine to express their point of view and uh, to be able to uh, express uh, their their opinion. I'm very happy that uh, now uh, you are, are talking about the necessity of implementing European values in Ukraine. Dear colleagues, dear journalists, of course many of you are interested in unbiased uh, approach to what is happening in Ukraine. I would uh, uh, like uh, to express my point of view, our point of view on the situation. And if it diverges with uh, your point of view, then we, uh, you uh, will be able to ask questions. I will answer, uh, and I promise to be uh, to answer your question. I promise to be unbiased. Um, um, I will. I, I, I can give you certain facts. This conflict, uh, this uh, violence, these hostilities is something internal for. Uh, 
uh, Ukraine. We had uh, a certain group of oligar oligarchs at power, in power, and now this group of, uh, and now there's a different group of uh, oligarchs who seized power. Actually, the problem is that this is uh, still a group of oligarchs who detains power in Ukraine and who protects their own interest. You have to understand that the power in Kiev expresses the interests of oligarchs. They are not interested whatsoever in solving problems facing the people of Ukraine. And basically, due, because of these problems, the people came to Maidan. Now, uh, uh, these political uh, forces uh, are aimed at only one uh, aspect of development of Ukraine. This is European integration. That's the only thing that interests the people in power today. Whereas uh, there is a part of our society, the, par the part of Ukrainian people who support integrating with the customs union, um, with Russia. Uh, that is why all the violence is uh, occurring and the arms are used against the people who do not share the point of view of the government. That's what I would like to express. This is our point of view. Our point of view was uh, that it was necessary to carry out a referendum like the one in Scotland, so that the people of Ukraine could express their will after an informed discussion. The people could talk about their values and protect their values, would be able to, to express their values during the referendum. And uh, according to the referendum, the um, uh, government uh, would be able to act. We uh, defended the position that all the opinions should uh, be expressed during the referendum. And of that, that was the point of view of the Communist Party of Ukraine. Um, considering what happened at Maidan, uh, having in mind that uh, Ukraine became a geopolitical field of the geopolitical playground, um, we uh, again expressed the point of view that Ukrainian problems should not be solved in Washington, in Moscow, or in the European Union. These uh, issues should be discussed in Kiev. In Kiev, different uh, interested parties should be listened to and uh, uh, the discussion should be taking place in the country. Whereas unfortunately today we are only seeing American interests uh, being, uh, being considered in, in, in Ukraine, which of course uh, cannot lead to any peaceful solution to our conflict. Uh, and another, po another uh, point of view that we expressed is that uh, we are that the Communist Party is now a systematic opposition, and we can offer a comprehensive program of action. Unlike the people who have been in power only for a very short time and who are using the political field uh, for satisfying their uh, commercial interests. The, uh, Ukra uh, the, the, the corruption, uh, corruption is huge in Ukraine now. Bribery is very widespread. Uh, the, 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 the prices are astronomical. Uh, the people have to pay uh, enormous money for housing, etc. Uh, the people, the common people cannot buy medications. They are not being paid salaries or pensions. That is why a lot of citizens of Ukraine cannot, uh, basically cannot uh, survive. Um, this this um, oligarch war is also destroying the economic potential of Ukraine and leading to the situation where Ukraine is, uh, um, is uh, um, becoming an African country. Um, whereas before we used to be one of the um, most developed countries in Europe. 
that is why this war doesn't have uh, uh, the, 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 cannot lead to anything good. We have to stop the hostilities. Of course, there are huge humanitarian problems. Uh, we can call the situation humanitarian catastrophe in Donetsk region, in Lugansk region. There's not enough food, not enough water, electric power, medications, and it leads uh, to the situation where the uh, humanitarian catastrophe does not concern only these two regions, but spreads to different regions as well. The uh, government finances the war and uh, destroys the economic potential of the country, which is an enormous threat to Europe itself. Today, Europe is actually financing uh, the continuation of destruction in Ukraine, which can lead to the situation where the level of unemployment brings huge labor migration to Europe. That will become the main destination of Ukrainian migrants uh, because already Russia is imposing limits on their migration. They, uh, our migrants will no longer be able to go to Russia. That is why they will come to Europe. Uh, again, I would like to stress that the Communist Party has systematic program. That is why the government is trying to destroy the party. We are a modern Communist Party. We have huge experience and uh, we can uh, provide for modern uh, development uh, models. Um, uh, unlike, unlike nationalists and uh, the uh, people in the government. Our assessment of the events that take place in Kiev these days is linked to the fact that the street and that in fact was a democracy clad in balaclavas with baseball bats and chains we're trying today to seize the parliament building in order for the parliament to make a decision to legalize and rehabilitate the organizations that were operational in Ukraine during the Second World War, who were the collaborationists with the, with the fascists. We're talking about the organization of Ukrainian nationalists, OUN, UPA. And therefore, the pressure was exerted on the parliament to ban the communist ideology. We were not only talking about, to ba about banning the Communist Party, we were talking about the ban to think and choose the path that the Ukrainian people may choose to go. So therefore, expressing my words of acknowledgement and gratitude to my colleagues here in Brussels, would like to em I'd like to emphasize that we, the communists, would like to see the Ukraine, to have the Ukrainian people and to see the Ukrainian people be able to judge the politicians by their deeds, what they do while they're in power, and then decide who they want to support. Today, we, as a modern party, are trying through a dialogue, through a competition of political ideas, we're trying to facilitate the development of, in Ukraine. Unfortunately, a, uh, I think big money, big capital chose the path of war. It's a tragedy not only for Ukraine but for Europe as well. Just uh, two very brief points because Gabi and uh, Petro have exhausted uh, the issue. It is not something that concerns only a party of the left in a relatively remote country. The ban of the Communist Party of Ukraine concerns both the future of this country and the future of Europe. For Ukraine, it's very clear such initiatives do not contribute to the normalization of the political life. Quite the opposite. They escalate the existing political violence. They radicalize the situation and finally they contribute to the rise of neo-fascist elements. On the other hand, we cannot tolerate in Europe the non-respect 
on fundamental political rights and the right to a fair trial. My second very brief point is that the European Union has huge responsibilities for, for what is now happening in Ukraine. It ignored the fact that Ukraine was a deeply divided country with a very weak civil society and political parties which were less more than the facade for economic uh, projects of the oligarchs. And it has engaged to a broad affair with Russia without principles and without any respect to the self-determination of the Ukrainian people. That's why this is press conference and uh, the hearing at the morning. It's not just a sign of solidarity to the Communist Party of Ukraine, but our determination at the party of the European left to support political freedoms in Europe and a better future of reconciliation and peace for Ukraine. Thank you very much. We open the question time. If you have questions to our guests or to our MEPs, I see also Sabine losing it here with us. So apparently there are no questions. So if you want to add something, or we can close here our. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, hold on, don't. Uh, yeah. Do you hear me now? Yeah, okay. Uh, my name is Wasim Brahim from uh, Asafir newspaper. I would like to ask why the government or the Ukrainian parliament uh, didn't target uh, the party of the region instead of targeting uh, the Communist Party? Because uh, as known that uh, the party of the region was uh, the suspected by supporting the oligarchs and the facade, etc., etc. Thank you. In my opinion, the thing is, the party of region as a political project of the oligarchs is, has naturally seen a defeat, was defeated because their role was linked to the strengthening of, the strengthening of corruption in the society because a very narrow stratus of people was getting rich quickly and that resulted in the fact that the first part of the Maidan that you were mentioning against the Yanukovych regime, the whole of Ukraine rose up. That's the fact. Now, why the sanctions were not applied to the party of the regions? I think we're talking here about the fact that the big oligarchic capital battling for the position of the president was looking for ways of forging a new union among themselves and practically speaking a significant part of the party of the regions in the parliament group uh, immediately after the coup and the Maidan went ahead and started to service the new regime which is now called the Poroshenko regime. A significant part of the party of the regions group joined the coalition with those who were protesting against them on the Maidan. That's the first part. The second part of the, re of the party assumed the position that they will stay close to the regime by forming a number of groups and uh, factions in order to engage in a dialogue with the regime. Therefore, the capital that is represented by the current regime and the capital that was representing the oligarchs of Yanukovych, they're now talking about redistribution of ownership. Under these conditions, they did not have any need to ban this party because once the party of the regions left, left power, uh, the regime of the Yanukovych, that political structure self-destructed, basically. And therefore, the issue today is the, the fight, the battle against the Communist Party, which is offering a, an alternative path that would ensure that 
the oligarchs are not dominating, that will link capital to the interest of the state, capital to the interest of individuals, and that is the approach we are offering up based on the European experience, based on the fact that we assess the events in Ukraine objectively, looking at what was happening in the past and what's happening now. We are therefore a real, pose a real threat to the current regime where they are trying to take advantage of the impoverishment of the society and the seriousness of social and other problems in Ukraine. May I have, may I say, add a few words, dear colleagues, may I add a few words, and I would like to have a clear understanding about the complexity of what's going on in Ukraine. Today in Ukraine, the foundation, legal foundations of the state and the statehood have been lost. We have lost them. Secondly, the economic foundation of Ukraine is being destroyed now, of the economic sovereignty of Ukraine. Today, these days, in Ukraine, the oligarchs in power are not capable of offering a constructive program uh, how to exit the crisis. To the, and therefore, in Ukraine, the oligarchs, using these problems, they've managed to uh, present to the society the pro-fascist nationalist organization, Svoboda. There, we've got two parts in Ukraine. Either we have a chaotic situation, a cha full of chaos, or a dictatorship, and possible option, as a possible option, a fascist dictatorship. We would like to e eliminate such possible scenarios. I mean, both first and second parts, and therefore, my colleagues, our colleagues here in the European Parliament and us are engaged in a dialogue on how we could help each other in, in preventing the consequences of that kind happening in the center of Ukraine, both for Ukraine and for Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you to all, all the people who have, who have attended, the journalists who are watching through WebStream and the interpreters.